Good morning. Thank you for joining us today. We'll get started here in about a minute. Good morning, welcome to the Solid Cab webinar on field to CAD automation. Uh, can I just get a quick uh, show of hands uh, or put your hands up if uh, you're hearing the audience uh, audio properly? Looking good, thank you, Brett. Thank you, Colleen. Thank you, Colin. Okay, looks like we have audio working correctly. So welcome to the SolidCAD webinar on field to CAD automation. Quick overview, a little bit of an agenda for today. Uh, while I go through this presentation, it should be about 20 minutes. Uh, please open your web browser and go to pigeonhole.at. Uh, there's an access code FME 2019 and post your questions there. Um, we're gonna do a quick overview of SolidCAD, what we do, a little uh, intro about what Save Software FME is about. Then we're going to tuck into a case study on field to CAD workflow automation. And then a real quick live demonstration of FME. Uh, look at the return on investment, some of the assumptions for uh, the case study. Then we'll tuck into uh, the questions and answers you're going to uh, uh, post. Uh, optional for those people that want to go deeper. Uh, at that point, after the question and answer session, we can certainly go deeper and take a look at uh, the real technical nuts and bolts of uh, how to write AutoCAD block attributes uh, with FME. Okay, so what's SolidCAD's value add? We're experts in survey, CAD, GIS, consulting, coaching, implementation, training, and connecting the dots. A little bit of a what we do at SolidCAD, training, consulting, workflow assessments, scan to BIM services, events, product lifecycle management, simulation and uh, analysis. Um, and today we're gonna concentrate on field to CAD uh, integration. We're not gonna do the uh, GIS portion today, but uh, that's another area where we concentrate. We help firms overcome challenges with design, production, collaboration, and project deliverables to maximize their technology and investment. So besides providing software, we also provide uh, expertise. A little bit about why we're different. Uh, we are able to work with multiple software vendors and we're resellers um, for uh, most of the slides that you see, um, the names that you see on, above here. Um, and we're not only able to um, resell the software, but we also uh, can integrate the software and make those systems talk together. So Cancel is in a kind of a unique position in that the Cancel group of companies under the Cancel umbrella are able to work together and develop uh, really tightly integrated solutions for our customers. A little bit about Safe Software. Uh, FME, it's the data integration platform for spatial data. Uh, with FME, you're able to connect uh, the dots between 400 sources. Uh, the, the ability to remove the data silos, get the different uh, departments talking to each other, get the data talking to each other and flowing from one department to another, uh, from different processes, and automate that in a repeatable way. Uh, one of the questions I get uh, asked quite frequently is, well, what the heck, Frank, is FME? 
So rather than throwing around a bunch of FME TLAs throughout the day, I thought we'd explain what FME stands for. It's a three-letter acronym for the feature manipulation engine that was developed by Safe Software. It uh, addresses the question of where and how to convert your data so that it either has that spatial information, that where information, combine it with multiple data sources, and get that data flowing. Uh, the big thing here is uh, by struggling, uh, that's the last point, I mean spending less time doing manual, repetitive, error-prone tasks. Some of the uh, FME services that we provide over at SolidCAD, direct support by FME certified professionals, I'm myself, Frank Zander, I'm one of those. Uh, priority support escalation with uh, safe software for our customers. And we have professional services for FME, including data workflow review, recommendations, integration between CAD, field, GIS, data workflow optimization, and FME training. In addition, SolidCAD provides direct FME support via our Solid Assist platform. And Solid Assist is available to uh, all customers that buy software uh, through SolidCAD. So today I wanna to walk through a case study. It's a, it's a field to CAD workflow, um, somewhat typical one that we have run into several times over the last six months. Uh, it seems to be cropping up uh, quite regularly. Um, with this particular workflow, um, it, it's uh, about how to take that field data from Terraflex uh, using FME uh, and to generate hundreds of drawings. Um, but first, a little bit about our customer's uh, vision as they explained it to us during uh, a discovery session with them. So this customer has a vision to improve field data accuracy, consistency, and reduce the time that they're spending out in the field uh, collecting the data. Additionally, uh, they wanted to avoid having to hire another CAD drafter to handle the increased number of uh, field polls that they would be uh, surveying in the field. So we went through a, an as a process of documenting the as is process for this customer. And it was found that they had a huge uh, number of manual processes that they were doing to create the CAD drawings. And the drawings are the deliverables that they get paid by for their customers. So the, uh, if they can reduce the amount of time that they were spending to manually put this bits of these bits and pieces of, inter of uh, information together, uh, certainly that would approve, improve their bottom line. So that is their as-is process. Let's take a look at the uh, 2B process. Uh, and you'll notice that the 2B process, where we've tweaked and automated things here or changed the process, these are shown in blue. So, of course, you're still going to have to take measurements and collect data in the field, but we're going to be doing that through uh, forms on the uh, Trimble Terraflex device. Uh, the photos, again, with the Trimble Terraflex device are going to be brought in. Uh, and then using FME will automate that information to uh, create the drawings. Now let's just overlay the as is and the to be process on the same slide. Okay. So believe it or not, we are ready to do a live demonstration. So what if drawings could be created automatically from field data? So let's go over to FME land and take a look at how that is done. Uh, I know for some of the people that we have online uh, today, this may be the first time that you have seen FME. So let me just bring that up. This is um, a workspace that has been simplified a bit just to make it uh, easily understandable for uh, our audience today. The first thing that we're doing is we're bringing in uh, some field data uh, into our workspace. And this is poll field data that's coming in and it has some information in it. It's got poll type, it's got rotation, it's got the name, it's got a bunch of information inside of it. Uh, the next thing that we do, what we do after we bring that information in is we transform it um, and what we do here is pull in information from multiple data sources so the original poll data is just the location information of where that poll sits out in the field 
we also want to bring in some information with regards to the parcels, the property information, the road information, and have that information pushed out to an AutoCAD drawing file over here. And for each one of the polls that we're going to be uh, taking a look at or bringing in, there's 175 of them, we want to generate a separate unique drawing for each poll. And inside of that drawing, it's going to have uh, a buffer of about 1,500 meters. We want to show only the parcel information and only the layer, the uh, the roads that are within that buffer uh, and display that on the drawing. Um, and the other thing that we want to do too is have information that's being brought from that poll, that rich uh, poll information that's being captured out in the field with its date and uh, the type and things like that, have that information show up on, uh, on the drawing as an AutoCAD block and have that synchronized over to paper space. So I've spent far more time explaining what it does than actually run it. So let's just run this workspace. Uh, this particular workspace should take about a minute and a half to complete, possibly two minutes. Um, and as you'll see, as it comes through uh, the FME workbench here, we can see the number of polls that are being processed and the layers that are being sent out to it. Okay, it's winding up here. Let's actually go over to the uh, folder that this is uh, putting the files into. You'll notice that this uh, folder is empty right now. And in a moment here, we'll start seeing the drawing starting uh, to appear as FME starts writing out those files to the uh, folder. And who knew that a minute and a half would seem so long in real time? Okay, so FME has finished uh, writing out the data here. Um, and it tells us it took, yes, uh, about a minute and 39 seconds to generate all of those drawing files and it uh, cranked out 175 drawings uh, in about a minute and a half, two minutes, something like that. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, what was generated here. Let's take a look at the uh, quality of the drawings. Let's open up this uh, first drawing here, this 174 drawing, and uh, take a look at it over in AutoCAD. Oh, I guess I should zoom to the extents here so we can see what we're looking at. Okay, so you notice that we've got the pole sitting right here in the very middle of this. Um, it's a wooden pole. It's got information that's uh, being populated here. This is a typical AutoCAD uh, block. This information came directly out of the field data that was collected and uh, has created this pole. It's located it in the right location in the world, and it's pulled in data uh, for the property information, the road information, everything else like that, and uh, shown it to us nicely uh, on our drawing file. Uh, one of the things that we can do with this, because this is also, the, also located uh, using real world coordinates when this information is processed through, is we can bring in background information for this particular one. Let's just put in some uh, world imagery from the, uh, a free Esri plugin. This will take a second for it to uh, go out to the web and uh, generate this. And there we have our nice background free imagery that is also plottable. Um, as I mentioned, not only is the block information put over here, but we're also generating a title block and we're putting that same information in here. So the, you'll notice that this drawing number 174 
is also part of the block title block uh, information that we've put in here, the date, uh, and things like that. Alrighty. That concludes the live demonstration. And as I mentioned, for those people that want to go deeper dive, we'll do that at the uh, at the end of the presentation. So there you have it, about uh, under two minutes to uh, generate 175 poll drawings. Drawings that uh, have attribute information, uh, and again, as mentioned, the parcel information and the road information is pulled from multiple sources and brought into this drawing. And the drawing also has the title block information as well as the attribute information shown over on screen. Okay, so one of the things I wanted to go through was some of the return on the investment um, assumptions, and this was validated with the uh, with the customer too. So the polls during the survey, um, let's see if I can just zoom in this a little bit tighter here, make it a little bit easier for folks to see. So the polls to survey uh, took about uh, six to eight months is their time frame. Uh, there's a thousand polls that they need to survey. Their current process takes about 30 minutes, and so that equates to 500 hours at a rate of $50 an hour. That's their 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 cost to actually uh, survey those polls currently using their current process. Uh, in addition to that, to verify that poll information in the office uh, and to verify the measurements takes another 30 minutes per poll in the office. So again. Uh, another 500 hours on a thousand polls. Uh, so copy in and rename photos per poll. Uh, they estimated that's taken about 10 minutes uh, per uh, per poll for them to do in the office. So you know that that starts creeping up too. So we took a look at the proposed solution uh, to survey the same 1,000 polls uh, and capture the data with Trimble devices. Um, so We've gone from 30 minutes down to 15 minutes. And our hours have dropped. Um, so now we're taking a look at this and we're now down to this number. So that's, that's the savings just uh, by going with the uh, Trimble solution, but it, but it gets better. And it, and it gets better when we start taking a look at when we introduce the uh, the FME. So when we put in the FME automation, we, we don't have that time that's spent in the office anymore to uh, to do those things. Uh, of course, there's going to be some um, cost to uh, fully implement the, uh, the FME solution, um, as well as um, the actual purchase of the FME license for the FME professional desktop license. So when we combine the FME licenses, uh, the, the uh, the support, the professional services for developing uh, this robust application, as well as the Trimble hardware, we're looking at about $45,000. Um, so the initial savings on that, if we compare, oops, let me go back here one slide. If we compare this, uh, the original cost was about $58,000. Uh, the FME solution with uh, the Trimble hardware comes in around $45,000. So there's an ROI return on automated savings of about $13,000. Um, but the big one here, uh, the hidden cost, that soft cost that sometimes isn't captured in this, in this type of an assessment is the cost that uh, would be incurred hiring uh, another drafts person to do the work here. So on that particular bent, um, you're looking at about another $64,000. So the whole return on automation savings and not hiring, having to hire another body, it's, it really makes a, a compelling case when we're looking at about uh, $77,000 in savings. And this return on investment, this is a, a six to eight month project, uh, is significant. So. Just thought we'd uh, put that in there. It's a great slide to have. Okay, so we're getting to the point where uh, we have questions and answers. Let's take a look at the questions and answers uh, that you folks have posted, hopefully, on the Pigeon app. And uh, I'm just gonna go over there right now and see where we're at. OK, 
Okay, I currently do not see any questions. So I'm going to post a question just to make sure that this is actually working here over on the Pigeon and Pro Project. I'm going to hit ask and see if other ones. The other question that we have here, is, I'd like folks to cast their votes if you can. On a deeper dive, are you interested in setting up FME to write AutoCAD blocks with attributes? If you strongly want to see that, let me know and uh, we will take it forward for that portion of the session. Uh, probably about another 10 more minutes to actually go into the bits and pieces of what's involved to uh, set up FME to write those block attributes. Okay, we have two comments. Someone says yes, thank you, Tony, thank you, Brett. Okay, so we are seeing this, we do know that it works, that's, uh, that's encouraging. Okay, some people are changing their scores. Can I change mine? Let's see if that worked. Okay, well, thank you for participating. I'm not seeing any questions here besides mine. Is this solution cloud-based or hosted on a server or a local machine? That is an excellent question. The uh, process that I went through is created with uh, FME Desktop, and with FME Desktop is where you always do your initial sort of test cases, your initial uh, proof of concept type stuff. Um, and this particular one uh, runs by itself on the desktop, uh, but that particular uh, uh, workspace can be published to something called FME server and with FME server we can set up an interface to drag and drop uh, our source files and have them automated in a way that uh, it generates all of those uh, would generate all of those drawings and uh, packages them up and zip them up and send them to somebody Is there training available for any individual? Absolutely, um, there is training available for uh, individuals. We, uh, it's what we uh, do at SolidCAD. We do an awful lot of individualized training. Uh, we like to run custom training in that we typically uh, base our training around projects. So if you have a project that you uh, want to work through, rather than at the end of the day do, just doing a cookie cutter course, which uh, there are lots of those available online uh, for free directly from Safe Software, and they are excellent by the way. Um, we do have uh, customized training, uh, and our bent on that, is, our take on that is that at the end of uh, customized training with SolidCAD, um, you're well down the road to having a uh, functional project. Okay, aside from CAD, what types of formats can FME work with? Uh, FME can work with uh, over 400 different formats, and uh, Scott, I will send you a uh, huge entire uh, listing of the, uh, the formats, or if anyone else is interested in the formats, just uh, vote it, and I will send you that information out directly. Someone might have already commented on that. What types of input data can be used? Okay, shape files, uh, Excel files, CSV files. Uh, there's over 400 data formats that uh, FME can read and uh, write to. Okay, great comments all. 
much appreciated. And feel free to leave any uh, additional uh, questions that you have here in this uh, pigeon, uh, and we will certainly get back to you on it. Okay, deeper dive, let's see where we're at. Okay, looks like we're doing great. So for those people that uh, are uh, need to go um, and want to uh, get back to it, uh, we'll let you we'll let you off the hook. Um, and for those people that want to stay around, let's uh, let's do a little bit of a deeper dive next to uh, tuck into what exactly is going on under the hoods with uh, setting up uh, FME uh, to go and pull that information uh, and, and write that information directly into an AutoCAD drawing file. Okay, here's my contact information if you need to get a hold of us, uh, and I'll show this slide again at the end. So let's go a little bit of a deeper dive, uh, setting up FME to write AutoCAD blocks with attributes. Uh, the first thing that you need to have here is a, a template file, a seed file that really doesn't have uh, much in it, perhaps your layers, maybe your text styles. Uh, for this particular example, it's really important that uh, this uh, template file, I called it my seed drawing, is uh, contains my at block attribute definitions. So over in AutoCAD land, uh, inside of my seed drawing, what I did was I created a block, and inside of the block, I created uh, blocks with attribute definitions in it. Um, and the really important part here is that the tag name is also the name that you're gonna be using over in FME to get those uh, attributes and get those information uh, flowing into uh, your drawing. So back again uh, to the previous slide, when I go and set up my AutoCAD definitions for writing out that file, when I say, okay, I'm gonna go and write out a drawing file, it really needs to have this, uh, this template file specified. This is the, the, the really the, the beauty, the magic of what's going on here. But besides setting up the attributes, there's uh, some things that we need to do inside of FME to make this work, okay? So, Inside of FME to write the blocks with attributes, um, th this has two bits. Um, th the first bit is we need to set up a DWG styler. And as the points are coming through, as those poles are coming through, for every pole, I'm getting its information because it's already spatial. The, the big part here is uh, right in this part, uh, the block name. So this is key. You have to supply the block name that you're going to put the attributes into. So this is step one. Step one is telling uh, FME as it's processing these uh, things through in the stream that you need to have uh, specified the actual block name that you're gonna be putting it through. The next thing we need to do over in FME or the next transformer in our, our FME workflow that we have to uh, set up is the attribute curator. And this part was not really abundantly clear to me. You know, it, it's so simple that it almost um, sometimes is glossed over uh, in some of the uh, literature and stuff over on the SAFE website. I mean, it is there, but you really have to be paying attention to, uh, to find it. So in here, in this attribute creator, um, you'll notice that this uh, attribute here that we're looking at is the same uh, attribute uh, that I, I'm creating here is the same, it matches the same um, uh, attribute over in uh, on my block that I created, okay? Same thing with uh, hydro number, same thing with the year pole, the pole owner, and their circumference. And what I'm doing here is supplying each one of these with information coming out of my uh, stream from FME, okay? Simple thing, but if it's not done properly, uh, the information doesn't flow back. So back over here, go back here to AutoCAD land, you'll notice that each one of these names matches information that we are pushing across over from, uh, from FME. Alrighty. Okay, 
that's that's the the portion of the uh, the deeper dive um, and uh, you know this information for creating this these transformers you'll notice that as the data flows through here here is the DWG styler and here is again where this is happening in the process as well when we go and create those attributes this is the location that this is happening and again these are the attributes that are inside of that block and that we are populating with information coming through on FME through the workspace. Okay, that concludes another amazing screencast. And at this point, I'll just leave the screen up for about uh, another minute. If you need the contact, contact information, uh, information, and this record is uh, this screencast is being recorded, and uh, will be available for others for download. Feel uh, free to reach out frank.zander at solidcad.ca. Um, love to hear your comments and thoughts. Bye for now.